Hello. 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 Hello, everyone. Uh, I, I think we are ready for uh, the code session. Uh, code session session eight. Okay. Okay. Hello. Okay. Hello, hello, Shiliang. Ah, uh, hello, Kenny. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Liu Duo. Hi, hi. Ah, uh, hello, Duo. Uh, I think I'll, uh, I'm the Shanghai local search engineer. Hi, uh, okay. hi. I, I, yeah, I hand, yeah, yeah, I will hand over to you to start the uh, code session uh, A, B. Okay. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the session of uh, machine learning acceleration in an embedded uh, world. I'm Kuni Chu from Capital Normal University. It's my great honor to chair the session. And the other uh, chair is uh, Dr. Duo Liu from Chongqing University. Uh, there are four talks in total in our session. So um, let's invite the first speaker, uh, Hai Feng Liu. And I uh, first I give a, a brief introduction of uh, the speaker. Hai Feng Liu is a PhD candidate at uh, Huazhou University of Science and Technology at, and uh, the Zhejiang Lab. His research focuses on the technology and the application in processing near or using memory architecture. Okay, hi Fong. Please start when you are ready. Uh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, okay. You you can you can start uh, to share your screen in the. Oh. Okay. okay. Okay, um, can, can you see the shared screen? Yes, yes, perfect. Go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Liu Haifeng. I'm currently a PhD candidate from Huazhong University of Science and Technology. Today, I'm very glad to be here to introduce our recent work on a flexible yet efficient DNN pruning approach for closed bar based processing memory architectures. As we know, deep neural networks are widely used in a range of of applications. A high currency model often involves a large number of training parameters and massive computation. Furthermore, as DNNs are used to solve increasingly complex problems, the need for more computation and storage resources poses significant challenges to the underlying architecture. In the traditional von Neumann architecture, the data are moved from the storage devices to the operating units for computation, which induces massive energy consumption. As we can see, the energy of DRAM access is up to 500 times higher than the energy required for performing one calculation. So it is no longer sufficient to meet the requirements of increasing storage and low latency demands of the modern DNNs. Processing memory, also known as PIM, is a, process, is a promising solution for the memory wall problem. The idea of PIM is, integrating the storage, is, is to integrate in the storage and the computation which is significantly reduce the data movements between the storage devices and the operating units. As we can see, the PIM solutions can achieve higher energy efficiency than the, con than the conventional architectures. Resistive read access memory, or RAM, is one of the emerging PIM devices. A RAM cell can store information through its programmable conductance. Besides, by applying a set of input voltages on the water lines, the resulting the, re the resulting current is, is the product of the conductance and the input voltage according to the Ohm's law. Thus, RAM is able to serve as both computing and storage units. Especially, RAM enables the ensued matrix, matrix vector multiplication for convolutional and fully connected layers in the DNNs. 
of the DNNs in the crossbar architecture. In the reram based DNN accelerators, each filter is flattened to a 2D vector and stores into one bit line as conductance. And the features of the and the features are accordingly flattened to 2D vector. Hello? No, iPhone, I'm not Hello, iPhone. Uh, could you hear me? We cannot hear you. Hello, Haifeng. Could you uh, give a response in the chat box? Okay, let's uh, wait one minute for iPhone to re-enter the conference. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. Hanaka. Can you hear? Yes. Yes, we can hear uh, you. Okay. Oh, sorry yes, for the have... internet. It's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sorry for. That's okay. Uh, I... Go ahead. Oh, uh, go ahead. Uh, however, there are remaining challenges in the reram based DNA accelerators. First of all, reram crossbar size is limited, which is too small for the modern DNNs, requiring massive DNA, require massive reram hardware resources. Besides, the DNN models are often sparse, but the coupled crossbar structure brings great challenges for the traditional weight purity method to be applied. Thereby, exploring a DNN weight purity method that fits into the reram crossbar architecture is necessary and meaningful. As we can see, arbitrary unimportant weights can be peeled in the unstructured building, but the induced irregular sparsity cannot convert to the crossbar area reduction. While the structured building that peels channels of filters in theory corresponding to the rows and the crows in the mapping matrix can fit well into the crossbar architecture, but the cost grade peeling causes a lot of incorrectly peeling or reserved weights. For example, the weight value one in the F1 is reserved, but the weight value 4 in F2 is puned. This defeats the idea of weight puring. Although the block-based structure puring decreases the puring gradually to, 
to mitigate the impact on the model currency, but it still cannot completely avoid the problem. Interestingly, we observe that different filters share a large number of metric subclones called segments that can be peeled by using the same ship. For example, S2 with S4 and S3 with S6 are in the same ship after peeling. These peeled segments in the same ship can be assembled into the same crossbar to share the same input. In this way, we not only achieve sparse peeling flexibility, like the unstructured peeling, but also sparse regularization, like the structured peeling, maintaining the occurrence of the peeling models and the efficient, and the efficient execution on IRM. To this end, we propose a new crossbar-friendly peeling technique, SYNC-PEEL. At the high level, SYNC-PEEL mainly includes software segments-based DNN peeling and hardware, and hardware level segment-guided peeling model execution. In the software, a segment ship extraction and selection algorithm is proposed to select the segment ship that are used for the ship guided with peering. In the hardware, we propose a hardware supported data path for efficient execution in the I in the crossbar architecture. And the modific and the mod and the modifications is lightweight and it can be easily integrated into any existing realm based DNA accelerators. Giving a map matrix, we first need to extract we first need to extract the segment ship of it. We first slice it into several levels horizontally according to the peering ratio and the crossbar size. And then each segment peels a fixed number of unimportant weights to fit the crossbar size. The relative positions of the peeling weights of the peel and the peeling weights in the segments form the ship of this segment. After collected all segment ships, we select the representative ship to get the peeling. We propose a projection value-based selection algorithm in which, first of all, each segment maps to all ships and get the projection values, then works for a fixed number of ships with largest projection values. After all segments are awarded, a fixed number of ships with, most, with, with most words are selected as the representative ships. After the representative ships are selected, we use them to gather the weight peering. Given a set of segments and, and a set of peering ships, we need to decide first which segments can be peeled entirely or together, and second, which ship can be selected to be peeled each remaining reserved segments. We consider both cases together by solving one typical combinatory constraint of the means of of the of the musician problem and using the ADMM to solve it. What details are in, the, are in our paper? After weight peering, we have got a peeled model and the corresponding index information. In sec peeled, the segments peeled based on the, on the same ship will be assembled together to share the same input. The segments ship index information of each CU is stored in the index buffer, which is used for the input index unit to produce the absolute adjust and fish the waterline activation vector at each cycle. Then the output of the crossbar will be restored in the output index units according to the segment, posi according to the segment positions. Uh, that's the SIGPU. And the next, we evaluated the performance of SIGPU against the state of the art peering solutions. We compare SIGPU with the cost grade structured peering and block-based structured peering on five, on five DNN models and three data sites. By default, all models are pre-chained by the pattern and applied 8-bit quantization. As we can see, single out outperforms the existing method in all DNN models with a higher or similar currency. Specifically, single achieves up to 14 times and three times higher pure ratio than hybrid P and uh, foremost. What details are in the paper? And the thanks to the reduction of the number of weights and the rerun crossbar area, SIGPU outperformance, hybrid P and foremost in both, in both inference speed and energy reduction. What details results such as extra hardware overhead and the sensitive study can be found in our paper. And finally, we give a brief conclusion. We propose a new crossbar friendly peering technique, SIGPU, which combines both flex which combines both peering flexibility of the unstructured peering and the sparse regularization of the structured peering, maintaining the occurrence of the peering model and the efficient execution on rerun. SyncPeel features three technical contributions. First, a novel projection-based algorithm is present for determining a set of segment-based peering chips for a given weight matrix. 
Second, a fast yet current purine technique is proposed to pure waste metrics by leveraging the selected purine ships. Finally, we introduce low, low overhead data paths and can be easily integrated into any existing rerun based DNA accelerators to generate the pure model efficiently. Hello, Hypo. Hello, Hypo, are you there? He sends the connection is down. Uh, let's wait one second for him to entry. Hello, hi, Fong. Hi. Oh, hi, Tom. Uh, I think, I think uh, well, the internet is uh, got some problem. Uh, so, Professor, uh, Professor Chiu, I, I think if uh, if his presentation is stopped here, we can ask question. Go to the questions uh, part. Okay, okay, okay. Let's move to the uh, question part. Uh, so, any questions? from the audience. Oh, uh, I, found, I, I, I think you can go ahead and uh, try re-enter again to answer the question. Thank you. It seems he is trying to share on the Okay, any questions from the audience about the first talk? But uh, Haifeng is not here. Haifeng, hello, are you there? Uh, hello. Could you hello. answer questions? Yes. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh, so I, I don't hear the, I, I didn't hear the questions, so. So, uh, so have anyone? Oh, uh, so so is there is so is so is there a question? If hello, oh hello, hello. There is no question here now. So oh. we are waiting for uh the questions from the audience. That. Um, Hello. Hi. So mm -hmm. I, I have a quick question for Hai Feng. Uh, so oh. could you explain uh, in more details about the overhead of the, the proposed uh, uh, pruning method? Uh, so uh, so uh, I, have, I have shown that there are um, there are so the pairing so the existing purine method are either uh, structured that purine in rows or columns in a cost grid or the that 
that that had that that is uh, um, and that that is that has a so you mentioned that the uh, overhead is extremely low right then how did you achieve this Hello, Haifeng. Okay, I, I think uh, it's lost up again. Uh, maybe we can give the time limit, we can go to the next one. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank the, uh, the first one. Let's move to the, uh, the second talk. Hello. Okay. Now let me let me introduce the speaker Yu Huang. Yu Huang is a postdoc researcher in the Zhejiang University, Zhejiang Lab, and the Huazhong University of Science and Technology. His research focuses on designing domain-specific accelerators for graph analytics. And uh, Yu Huang, please introduce your work. Thanks for your introduction. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, hello everyone. My name is Huang Yu from Padua University of Science and Technology. It's my honor to be here to share our recent work. In this talk, I will present really an uh, iron-based processing memory accelerator for dynamic graph convolutional networks. Inspired by the great success of neural networks, graph convolutional and neural networks, as known as GCNs, has emerged as effective means to improve machine learning on graph data. However, in the real world, graphs are often subject to tuning in a series of graph step swaps at a different time steps. To learn the useful information under such Christmas, dynamic graph convolutional networks. DGC has emerged to enable machine learning on such dynamic graphs. As shown in the figure, DGC often rely on an iterative tuning process with two basic kernels, a JSON and the RN kernel. Specifically, the JSON kernel aggregates the features of library vertex from one single snapshot to obtain the representation features of each vertex. Due to the graph sparsity, the JSON kernel is usually both sparse in computation and in regular in memory access. On the other hand, the ARM kernel captures the tempo aspects by collecting the representation features of each vertex across the snapshots, which is computationally intensive but sequentially dependencies. At the first glance, when first both intuition for realizing dynamic graph convolutional network models is to directly harness existing JSON and ion accelerators to handle the JSON and ion kernels separately. Unfortunately, this exhibits a unical dynamic irregularity and the intervertex locality, such as applying existing JSON and RN solutions to the DGSEN, cannot accelerate DGSENs effectively and efficiently. For the RN accelerator family, in order to guarantee the Quest quality of the service. The best size is usually small. However, this is exhibit a large number of same data access patterns for the vertex in the timestamps. Given that the number of vertex in each graph snapshot can easily be minimized, existing an accelerator will miss, will miss such inter vertex locality in the digits resulting in data access and to vertex and the weighted parameters. Interesting, we observe that the JSON and ion kernels of digits have the operationally similarity from perspective of matrix vertex multiplication, which can be understood as being equivalent to a set of matrix operations. Recent, recent studies demonstrate that Resistive random access memory, as, as long as uh, IRAMs, 
can serve as an essential compute, computer logical to perform MVM operation with high performance and low energy cost compared to the CMOS based architecture. Thus, we are motivated to architecture GSIN and ARM kernels with uh, integrated IBM based arch architectures. At a high level, we adopt a hierarchical architecture, a really chip consists of a number of processing engines, processing engines connected through a merge based on chip intellect. Each PE includes multiple computing units, really is connecting a Reading is connecting with uh, off chip memory for processing large graphs. Sorry, overall, really perform digitization in a step by step manner to decouple the data dependencies of different graph snapshots for each for each snapshot. Really allo allocates a certain number of PEs to the GCN and the ion kernels depending on their workloads in the Phonix view. Both kernels can be pipelined to exclude for avoiding the movement of intermediate data. For, for the JSON kernel, as shown in the figure, as shown, as shown in the figure, really follows the vertex-centric mapping in, a, in re, Reflip, which maps vertex features into crossbar and the feed edge data as input. However, as different destination vertex with different source vertex, the vertex data is loaded into crossbar on demand. This may result in redundant load for source vertex, as shown in the figure C. Following the vertex in the orders, vertex 4 is loaded three times. The problems of minimize the number of loads can be formulated as one of the maximize the number of shared vertex source vertex. The problem is equivalent to the max TSP, which is NP hub. Some reasonable algorithms are promising, but still run in high company companies. As, as dynamic graph frequently changes across different step shops, applying these earlier solutions can reduce the number of redundant data loads, but their internal processing overhead is still too high and will thus severely offset the overall benefits achieved. Fortunately, many work tests in the real world graphs share labels or have some distinct connections to the group of work tests. This enables us to simplify the process of finding the last word test to be scheduled for the optimal scheduling order with a simple metric. That the word test with the maximum in degree edge among the labels of the concurrently scheduled, scheduled word test must be selected as the last word test to be scheduled, which can be implemented easily as a word test scheduler. For the iron kernel, each snapshot in this system involves a large number of vertices. The, this exhibits a significant intra-step swap data locality. Therefore, we are motivated to propose a locality-aware data flow execution model to reduce data access. First, we diffuse the corresponding input and the hidden weight matrix into one large matrix. This allows the weight matrix uh, to maximize the sharing of the vertex vectors, thereby improving the vertex data reuse. Second, for the weight parameters, different vertex share the same weight matrix in a graph in a snapshot. Really maps the fused weight matrix into crossbars and fit vertex features as the input of crossbars. This enables loading weight matrix only once for each snapshot. Enhance the reuse of weight parameters. For the interkernel collaboration, interkernel data flow can be pipelined in a finer grain to reduce intermediate data movement. However, due to the irregular graphs, different vertices in the JSON kernel have different workloads. In contrast, all vertices in the ARM kernel have the same fixed execution pattern with the same amount of workloads. Due to such mismatch workloads, pipeline stores between the two kernels can be introduced. To resolve this issue, really makes use of a faithful buffering maximum to 
catch the word has feature arriving at different times from the JSON kernel and then pipeline them to the ARM kernel. As a result, the executing of JSON and ARM kernel can be decoupled, allowing us to design an inter-kernel pipeline separately for, per, for perfect saving efficiency. Next, we evaluate the performance and the energy efficiency of really against state-of-art JSON software and hardware solutions. We compare very flip with the state-of-art PYGT framework on CPU and the GPU platforms, which is highly optimized library for DGSEN. We also compare really with the state-of-art rerun-based JSON accelerator, Riflip, and the IN accelerator, ERA LSTM. Compa oh, sorry. Compare with the PYG CPU, really is faster by 900 times on average due to the PIM enable features provided provided by the Cospa and the ready architecture adopted. Uh, Riflip outperforms the PYG GPU by 27 times on average. Despite the fact that GPU is equipped with massive cores, the irregular memory access in the aggregation phase makes it difficult to for PYGT GPU to harness the massively parallelism and renewable. Riflip really also a Outperformance uh, Riffly BRA by eight times on average. As for energy consumption, thanks to the in situ processing capability of crossbar for reducing data movement overhead significantly, really consume, consume less energy than PYGT CPU. PYGT GPU employs, employs massive cores that can consume more than five times power than ready. Uh, overall, really saves 18 times on average against the PYGT GPU. Really is superior to the Riffly PR with less energy consumption by seven times on average. Uh, what is your results such as effectiveness of ready in terms of redundancy from free scheduling, locally aware data flow, and the internal pipeline can be found in our paper. Finally, we give a brief conclusion. We propose the first DGSEN accelerator ready with an integrated architecture that allow us running the JSON and the ARM kernels uniformly on an ARM cross bus. Ready is designed with three innovations. First, ready adopts the redundancy from the redundancy free scheduling mechanism to elevate dynamic irregularity for JSON kernels. Second, really, really is locality aware data flow execution is designed to maximize the inter vertex data reuse for the ARM kernel. Finally, really includes the inter kernel pipeline to maximize the overall efficiency by eliminating in the off chip memory access to the immediate data. Really is showing significant outperformance still at CPU, GPU, and uh, accelerator solutions in terms of both of performance and uh, energy consumption. Uh, that's the whole content of my report. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the presentation. Uh, any questions? Any questions from our audience? Hi, hello, hello. Uh, uh, this is Liang Chi. I, I have a, a quick question for the experiment. Okay. Uh, so so you are uh, you are using IURM to uh, to do that, to do the experiment. Uh, can you give some uh, introduction to how did you simulate the IURM or you are using a real chip or any? How did you make sure it can be consistent with uh, can be uh, consistent with uh, with our uh, real products or something like that? Okay. Uh, thanks for your questions. Uh, uh, we use uh, MSM to simulate uh, the configurations of IRAM cross bus. Uh, that uh, also we built the. And homemade simulators, the IRAM uh, parameters uh, as uh, used, uh, used as the parameter used as the configuration parameters to use the in our homemade simulators. And uh, also, we built uh, before the experiment, uh, 
before the experiment, do the experiment, we do several um, simple benchmarks such as matrix um, multiplication in our simulator to uh, verify, verify the uh, results and correct correct correctness. Okay. Uh, uh, another question is about uh, the, mm -hmm. as I know, there are many related issues in REM. Yeah, did you simulate uh, the the related issue? Uh, oh, in that, this kind of yeah, yes. Uh, that's a good question. So, um, in this paper, uh, we we indeed uh, that uh, not considering such the uh, noise of the IRAM, such as. Uh, uh, snake current uh, and others, but uh, uh, but uh, in our in our in previous works, we we have made uh, some experience uh, to verify this that uh, such as the neural networks are robust algorithms, and we can use the pre pre-train the pre-train the approach to um, to decrease the uh, noise of IRAM, IRAM cells, uh, such as the uh, sneaky current and the others uh, in, in, in impact. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, okay thanks. Uh, now let's move to the third work. And then, uh, uh, oh, okay. So let's invite uh, the third speaker, uh, Jürgen Taish. I hope I uh, read the name correctly. So uh, Jürgen Taish is a proper full professor at uh, the FAU in Erlangen, Germany. He directs the chair for hardware software co-design at the Department of uh, Computer Science and uh, has himself been program chair of CODES plus I, uh, SSS many years ago. He is giving the talk on behalf of a young Sommer who has left uh, the chair recently. Thank you, Thank you, Kenny, for the nice introduction. Yeah, it's, it's my pleasure to present this work with this original from a previous PhD student, Jan Sommer, but also other authors. And the work is about a new types of neural networks that are called spiking neural networks. And so as an alternative to convolutional networks in classical digital logic, we investigated the benefits of uh spiking neural networks so the problem statement and contributions of our paper as presented here are that we have observed that classical uh, convolutional neural network implementations usually underlies the processing hardware if there's only sparse inputs in the inputs to be processed also they are quite power hungry and energy inefficient because of multipliers and uh, multipliers are known to, to consume a lot of energy. So spiking neural networks are binary spikes, basically in, in our implementation. They compute only when there's events on spikes coming in. And so the processing elements will only operate when their spikes are arriving. And uh, if we elsewise don't co compute and have no multiplications, we want to show that we can have suffi uh, sufficient better energy efficiency by exploiting the input sparsity of such spiking input maps. So the contributions is first an accelerator architecture, which is programmable for processing spiking neural networks. And it features uh, the following four major contributions. The first one is the processing elements are multiplier free. So we, we hope and we see results if we can save energy by having no multiplications at all to process. Second, we have a parallel processing architecture for membrane potentials, which are accumulated over uh, the input uh, of spikes. Then it's completely self-scheduled spiking processing. So having event queues, so only when the events are coming, uh, the processing elements have to compute um, the neurons. 
and finally some results uh, about a speed up of about factor of 10 faster and an efficiency gain in power efficiency about 15 uh, with respect to state-of-the-art SNN implementations on FPGAs, which is our target here. Now let's look at the principle uh, of, of the spiking neural networks. You see here one neuron in the middle, and you see on the left arriving some spikes, which are just binary 0, 1 spikes. And uh, so the model we are using in the hardware implementation is called integrate and fire model. Um, let me explain this. So the neuron integrates, shown here by the sum, the weighted input uh, spikes of the membrane pot potential mu m. So there's a storage here, the membrane potential, and this is accumulated over arriving spikes, which are weighted by a weight, uh, but there's no multiplication needed as this is just 0, 1. Um, this slope dictates, uh, there's a slope also here. Um, the slope dictates the rise or fall of the membrane potential Vm and over time. And once Vm is shown here on the chart to the right, once it reaches the firing threshold Vt and no spike has been emitted previously, the neuron emits a spike as shown down to the right here. Due to uh, the storage mu m, this neuron can spike even from a single input spike. Now let's look more closely what computations are involved in order to process such a neuron processing of spikes. There are just three equations here to look at. Um, so this is the integrate and fire model, which has also been proposed already earlier by by other approaches, so it's not completely new. So main brain potential slope mu m is updated as shown in equation one. The value of the previous, that's t minus one time step, is taken and uh, it's added by the weighted uh, or by the weighted sum of uh, the current um, uh, spikes arriving at the input x at the previous time step. Um, and please note that this multiplication of the weights and the spikes is not a real multiplication as the spikes are only uh, binary values, zero, one. And this allows to implement the integrate and fire model without performing any actual multiplication. Then in equation two, the slope is then added to the membrane uh, potential uh, Vm of the previous time step to get a new membrane potential. Finally, when is a spike emitted by a neuron? This is shown in equation three. So the output spike is one or zero. It's one if this weighted uh, previous poten current potential is greater than the threshold where this neuron fires. And it has not been spiked previously in this excitation. So that's why t when t spike is zero. And what this happens then, the output spike is one elsewise. It stays zero. Now let's look at the hardware architecture to implement uh, neural processing of such um, spiking uh, spikes. So you see here, first of all, the, the main contribution is here an address event queue, AEQ, which is enqueuing spikes from previous processing. So only when spikes arrive, they are enqueued in such a queue we will see on the next slide. Then from this queue, here we have a convolutional unit, which are nine processing elements, three by three processing elements, which can access a different of these queues to process several of these spikes in parallel. And um, um, the convolutional finally uh, unit uh, updates the mem membrane potential memories according to equation two. And finally, to the right, the thresholding unit adds the bias to the neuron stored in the membrane potential. Also, according to equation three, the thresholding unit creates new address events at the output, which are fed back then again in the input uh, AEQ uh, for new address events, which are then processed again by the convolutional unit. The final processing of the spiking neural network is a fully connected layer, and this is computed finally by this upper unit called here classification unit. Okay, now let's look how convolution with address events is efficiently performed. So this is a queue here, 
And what you see instead of storing only with a symbol here, the input feature map, here you see it's sparsely uh, covered by, by spikes. Only two spikes are one, all others are zero. So what we, we don't store the full input feature maps, we only store event queues, which have only for each event being one, an entry here, which gives the index in the input map uh, where the spike is located. And what it's done now is shown uh, to the right here. Uh, to perform convolution, the AAQ is processed sequentially. So for each of the processors, it, it takes the first element here in the event queue and then applies a convolutional. And two address events as in queued here currently will be then processed sequentially. In a classical sliding window based convolutional pros, because we have a four by four matrix here, this would require 16 four by four steps. However, uh, one step for each pixel position in the input feature map, but for an address event, a maximum of nine neurons highlighted in white here must be updated in parallel due to the three by three neighborhood of the kernel. On the right hand side, uh, it is shown how the membrane potentials are updated in parallel with the kernel's constants routed by 180 degrees. This rotation is necessary to achieve the same result as in the classical sliding window-based convolutional. Note that the membrane uh, potentials VM here uh, is initialized with zeros. Also note that only the AAQ is used to present uh, the input feature map, so we don't have to store a two-dimensional uh, matrix as in conventional neural networks here. So only when events are created, they are enqueued, and the processors will then use the indices to compute only operations at, at, at things where also activation activity happens. All right, so um, the, how are the mem membrane potentials stored? They are stored in an interlaced uh, fashion. This is also this interlacing is the second contribution to efficient event processing of spikes. To the left, we see the membrane potentials uh, in a visual representation. And to the right, we see the actual memory interlacing scheme. So we see we have a total of nine memory blocks in the FPGA. They will be implemented by individually accessible and, and, and readable, uh, parallel readable individual block RAMs. Um, and all um, the elements are distributed in such a way that the three by three window as highlighted here in red always accesses all memory columns in parallel. So we can access all by nine processing elements, all these nine elements, because they are enqueued in the memory potential memory in, in different independent um, memories blocks with uh, read uh, decoders. So each element is uniquely addressed by an I address ij here in brackets, and the values are 0 to 8 displayed in red. For example, the top, top left memory potential with a value 2 and the address 0, 0 is stored in column zero, um, in column zero at address zero zero. Each column can be now implemented uh, as a memory with a, a dual ported RAM. So the writing and reading of all these can can be in parallel, so that the processors can be have a good utilization. Okay, the same memory interlacing scheme is also applied to the address event queue itself. We see here also nine memories in the address event queue. Uh, that stores the spikes and the addresses as elements here. Again, the individual addresses of the windows are stored in the nine different columns. The 10 spikes of the feature map, F map to the left indicated by the ones and the white shade are put into the AAQ to the right as address events. Again, all of these columns are addressed in parallel to, uh, to achieve a maximal throughput. And note again that the binary F map on the left is not stored at all. It's only a visualization that makes it easier to understand what is happening in these event queues for the spikes. Now for comparison. We compared our spiking neural networks. These are the first two rows this work with different quantization in terms of number of bits um, for the weights, eight bits and 16 bits in this example, as you see here to various accelerators from related work. Some of them include FPGA implementations, but we also see 
towards uh, ASIC and SOC and the GPU implementation also compared here. Um, we can clearly see that in our results here, if we look at the throughputs achievable here, that there are, can be a factor of 10 better than other comparative uh, implementations in number of frames per second that can be processed by the spiking neural networks. We can also see that we have a very uh, power efficient uh, implementation here when we look at frames per second per watt and the power overall power consumed here on the FPGA. We see that ASIC solutions might have a better power efficiency. We also see on the right column that the accuracy uh, is here 98% for an MNIST data set, which is a kind of small data set uh, for this example that is uh, processed here. Uh, but it's com competitive here in delivering 98% versus some solutions are 1% better here. But it's really uh, what is important here that the throughput can be a factor of 10 higher and <clears throat> also the, the efficiency. That was what we wanted to show. Okay, uh, for more details and on the results, we would like to invite you to the poster session afterwards or to, to read the paper. With this, I would like to conclude our, our work. We have presented a configurable, flexible, multiplier, multiplier free uh, architecture for processing spiking neural networks, which is based on address event queues to efficiently store <coughs> arriving spikes and <clears throat> to have a high utilization by enqueuing only when spikes are coming in processing elements need to work they are also multiplier free which saves an energy over classical convolutional network implementations uh, the implementation of interlaced memory and uh, and the encoding of the location of these spikes offers us to have a parallel access on the membrane potentials and their updates and also on the address event queues. Basically, uh, the, the scheduling of the processors is done in a self-scheduled way. So once there are still in the input address queue, some events, then they, they do work. If they are empty, they just stop working uh, with the spike events. And we have shown that a speed up of about a factor of 10 with other previously proposed FPGA implementations of spiking neural network approaches has been achieved and is possible at an efficiency gain about a factor of 15 compared to state-of-the-art SNM implementations. For the future, we are currently investigating and, and there's also uh, now other students uh, who took up this work by Jan Sommer, is the question, can we also show that this architecture is able to process more uh, computationally intensive models than MNIST, do we reach also a high accuracy here in, in training and can we really claim that on the same FPGA target that uh, spiking neural networks uh, get promising energy and, and latency benefits over classical implementations. Here with this I would like to uh, close my talk and thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for the Thanks for the uh, wonderful talk. Any questions from the audience? Yeah, so uh, we have a question in the chat box. Uh, your work only saves the position of uh, one uh, pixels in the input image to compress the input data lens but for some situations like there are a lot of one pixels in the input image where this method costs more memory consumption compared with directly inputting a binarized uh, matrix mm -hmm. that's a very good observation and and it, it's really uh, the true yeah uh, so the, the area hardware area or memory area benefit is truly given and dependent on the sparsity of your input yeah. feature maps. Yes, yes, yes. It's fully correct. Yes, if you would have a full uh, binary matrix of spikes everywhere in the input feature map, um, then um, yes, 
you need a lot of bits for for indexing and and um yeah so i guess uh, the efficiency in terms of uh, the memory effort for storing the indices uh, will uh, must be uh, regarded to yes okay very good thank you <laughs> thank you thank you Okay, since uh, our time, uh, so there is a delay uh, from our schedule. Um, let's move to the last talk of uh, our session. So if you have uh, further questions, we can uh, discuss with the speakers in the uh, Zoom chat box. Sure. Thank you. Now, uh, let's move to our last talk. The speaker is Teng Wang. Please let me give a brief introduction. Teng Wang is a PhD student in School of Computer Science and Technology, the University of Science and Technology of China. He is studying embedded system lab of Suzhou Institute for Advanced Research of USTC, Suzhou, China. His research interests focus on neural network accelerator and architecture. Now, Tong Wang. Um, oh, hi, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, okay, uh, maybe people huh? yeah. yeah, please give your talk. Something wrong. Uh. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tiong Wang, and uh, I'm a PhD student uh, in the University of Science and Technology for China. Uh, today, I will share my work about, about the transformer accelerator, which is called VIA, a novel transformer accelerator based on FPGA. Here, let's begin. Uh, since Google proposed the transformer in 2017, uh, it has made the development of NLP better. Uh, like GPT, a bird, and a robot. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, it has verified the ability of, trans uh, of the attention in the transformer about uh, uh, feature extraction and analysis of same same data. In the past few years, uh, the bone development of transformer in LP has also affected the research of uh, computer vision. As shown in the table one, uh, after VIT introduced the transformer in 2020, uh, the third PVT and the screen showed the better results compared to the countable model one by one. And uh, here is the structure of transformer is shown in white, uh, which is compared uh, composed of some encoder and uh, decoder layers. Uh, encoder layer has two functions. Uh, model had self attention and uh, uh, position wise fully connected fit forward and uh, uh, decoder layer has three function uh, which is added a mask motive had self attention compared with encoder and uh, the structure of the transformer is shown in the right uh, this work modify the transformer block uh, to adopt image data and uh, connect it in seconds in the subsequent improvement, uh, PVT introduced the uh, pyramid uh, structure, swing introduced the shared window, and so on. Uh, the detail of uh, transform block is shown in the right, and uh, we can see uh, its structure more like the encoder. So uh, there are two differences uh, between transform uh, model in LP and CV, uh, no decoder layer and dimension situation. Uh, as shown in the lower right, uh, there is an uh, example data of the calculation in mod has several attention of transformer. Uh, different color represents the independent data, so the vision transformer can potentially achieve a high degree of parallelism. But because of the rescued connection, also called the shortcut, uh, we can also map transform block to hardware easily. As showing the table two, uh, we could see some challenges uh, in computation of transform block. Uh, here is the uh, uh, pass dependency caused by shortcut and uh, complex nonlinear function like GALU. 
Uh, in detail, generally, we should cluster P minus one barbarians to the you know, P level computing pipeline process for storing the intermediate data because of residue the data crossing the whole process stage. Uh, we must cost the same size again. Uh, so, uh, to face up this challenge, we proposed our hub layer mapping. Uh, we divided the block to two E's and calculate the provided residue result in the start of this part in this method. Uh, we can, in this method, we can avoid on cheap resource cost of uh, shortcut. And uh, the improvement after optimization is like equation one. And uh, in the next, uh, we use data prediction to further optimi uh, optimize internal pipeline, as shown in feature seven. Uh, there are three parts uh, in the calculation: <coughs> the layer normalization, model has self attention, and fully connection. Uh, from the workflow of this calculation, uh, the original input data corresponding to each part of the output is slightly different. Uh, we <laughs> therefore we analyze the independent correlation of input and output data and find the common data type to uh, in the whole calculation process to optimize the overall calculation and improve cost of on cheap resources. And uh, based on our thoughts, we design the VI architecture. As shown in the feature, uh, feature eight, it is consists of memory read unit, the memory write unit, as the input data, and the two types of processing elements, uh, NIC and uh, NMP, where the NMC is mainly responsible for calculating the layer normal and the model had self attention in the visual transformer model. And uh, at the same time, the NMP is mainly responsible for calculating the layer normal and the MLP layer. <laughs> and here is the NSA engine. Uh, the calculation competency is showing the below, and the data flow of NSA is showing the right. Uh, uh, this, uh, these four units <coughs> uh, operate in sequence. Uh, it is worth note that the MAM is uh, divided into two parts because the value set uh, in the output result of MAG need to be using MAM2 uh, to improve the efficiency of the calculation pipeline uh, by catching the value set for one stage uh, the performance of MAM2 can be improved, can be increased to double without additional computing resource overhead. And uh, the next is an MP engine. Here is the uh, uh, calculation complex two, and uh, the data flow of the MP is shown in the right. Uh, this four units also operate in, in seconds. Furthermore, uh, GALU needs to be need to calculate the standard normal this distribution transformation, which use a larger consumption of hardware resources. So we separate the calculation section into a single computing unit and, uh, and use a piecewise function or processing machine to increase the efficient utilization of resources. And uh, next is design space exploration. Uh, because of the two equations, of P performance, it can be found that the overall performance of VI is affected by the maximum latency of each computing unit in the NSA and the NMP. Therefore, to optimize the computing performance and hardware utilization, we use homogeneity to measure the results after optimization. Uh, therefore, uh, we propose a workload homogeneity of algorithm based on the grading stage to complete the DSE task as shown in the right, uh, we try to get the implementation of a computing unit with our search algorithm according to exciting uh, conditions. And the next is the experiment section. We implement uh, uh, VA on Zenx LWU50 
you can PGI with weighted 2021 total flow. That's showing the feature 11, uh, each processing parts, original calculation amount and the data amount are very different. Uh, after optimization, their theoretical latency become consistent. Uh, it is showing that our uh, DSE algorithm is effective. And from the table three, we could uh, see the uh, uh, performance com compared with the CPU and the GPU. Our pro prototype achieve uh, about 60 times performance speed up and 200 times energy efficiency compared to CPU. And uh, to GPU, the performance improvement is not, not better, but to the energy efficiency improvement achieve 5.2 times. And uh, the second is performance compared with the Horizon FPGA implementation. Uh, because it is the past two years that the transformer we used in CV. So up to now, there are few related publications for wind transformer accelerator. Uh, therefore, in table four, we just uh, list some uh, related work that design accelerator to transformer in LP. To compare to the TC with our work, data <coughs> uh, position and uh, model compression have a significant impact on um, performance and computation efficiency. And for NPE, uh, we, uh, its inference time is about 200 uh, milliseconds when performing the bird with same slides, uh, 512. Uh, the uh, so the throughput arrives is approximately the level of 100 joules. But therefore, our design achieves about just three times higher throughput and uh, two higher uh, computation density. And compared to the to the others, uh, we our design is higher, uh, max ten times uh, higher in throughput. Uh, <laughs> 15 and uh, 11, team, uh, 11 times the calculation density and the efficiency. And uh, it's, this is our experimental compare results. To conclude in our work, uh, we propose an accelerator architecture for wind transformer called VI, which has two reverse processing engines with the internal screen. Uh, we use half layer mapping method to reduce the impact of pests dependency overhead. And we use the uh, additional stretch to improve the overall calculation in the internal stream. Uh, here is some reference in of these slides. And uh, thank you for listening. If you have any question, you could ask me here or send an email to me or send the message on the chat box. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the pre presentation. Uh, any questions from our audience? Okay, uh, I have one question. Uh, does your technique suitable for the sparse problem of the transformer? Uh, yes, I don't uh, thought about the sparse, uh, sparsity of the transformer. I just uh, uh, sort of about the calculation of the uh, transformer. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I, I also have a, a question for you. Um, I, I found this is a, a novel uh, vision transfer, transformer accelerator. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it is designed based on FPJ. So, so can you give comments? Um, why do you select the FPJ for uh, for the accelerator design? Is it a good choice or any other uh, candidates or selection? Uh, because uh, the platform, the FPJ platform, because uh, it is easy to use and uh, uh, to achieve our goal. That's all. Uh, so, so do you do you think uh, some something like ASIC or uh, something like GPU? Uh, because as I know, FPGA has very high power consumption. Yeah. Uh, in your experiment, the result is thirty nine. Uh, what I think. 
So, so um, uh, to determine the selection uh, of the platform is uh, is critical, yeah. uh, especially if you want to adopt this kind of uh, design for industry or market uh, and can be accepted by market. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I am wondering, um, uh, did the FPGA is the best choice? Uh, do Do you have any any consideration on the uh, on this issue? Uh, okay. Uh, in this work, we just uh, thought about FPGA because uh, FPGA is easy to use and uh, uh, FPGA is enough to achieve our goal. Uh, uh, if any, uh, uh, if I need to design more architecture uh, uh, to implementation, I maybe I will choose ethic in the future. Mm, that's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, that's all for our uh, session. Uh, can you, your conclusion? You conclude? Okay. Uh, thanks very much for your participation. So that's all for the session. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.